Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how to make a huge difference in your small space. So the problem is that it's hard to kind of break out of that starter apartment vibe that a lot of them have. And part of that has to do with kind of the vendors and what they supply. Some of it's kind of temporary. It's not particularly expensive, but things have changed. And I'm gonna show you how a pro solves for all of that. Let's jump right in with my number one tip for all small spaces, which is you have to handle the envelope. And that means the floors, the walls, the ceiling, everything. You have to make sure that it's doing the right thing. What's the right thing? You wanna keep it all the same. So walls, ceilings, doors, your trim, your floors, everything. Now on walls, trim, ceilings, you wanna paint that out all to be the same. You can either take it light or you can take it dark, but you want to be on the extreme ends of the light reflectance value to make sure that those walls pop out and away as best they can. And because you do the trim and all the doors the same, there's no lines to break anything up. That's what I mean by handling the envelope for a small space. And now another thing to consider when handling your envelope is consider a completely monochromatic scheme, which totally makes the space feel large. White floors, white walls, white ceilings, that thing's gonna explode. It's gonna be 600 feet, but it's gonna feel like 2,500. Now, to keep it from feeling boring, make sure that you mix up your textures, your sheens, your shapes, your metals. Those can all go in as kind of a textural story to make it be different, but keeping it monochromatic is a really good tip to explode your small space. So your next tip, which is super important, and we're still on the envelope, is about handling your flooring. Now, in a small space, you wanna make sure that it's all visually the same. Now, I'm not talking about if your bathroom breaks away, but the main space all should be the same. Carpet, wood, tile, whatever it is you've got. If that's the case, great and you want to kind of consider one of two options either skipping an area rug altogether or if you do do the area rug make sure like you see here that the area rug is tonally the same as the floor so it doesn't create this strong visual break on the floor level because that's not where you want to draw people's eyes in a small space you want them to move up and out and have the space feel large. So don't draw them down by making a big accent break by putting an area rug in where you don't need it. So my next pro tip is about room dividers. And especially if you're in a studio or like a tiny one bedroom, you're gonna want the option to consider having some sort of divider up at some point, maybe even not permanently, but you can think about a number of different options. I love the idea of either glass grids or kind of pierced hanging grids these are all great options and kind of give you a sense of some privacy that divides maybe the bed area from the living space. That's all cool. I love the idea of ripple fold drapery suspended from the ceiling, right? I would prefer to do them semi-transparent as opposed to here, but I kind of love the groovy little painting that's hanging out in front. That's sort of a fun little detail like that. I also love the idea of doing storage as a room divider. Ikea has some great options. Or if you want, you can just do something simple like my go-to is a little screen from the inside. And I love the inside's version because you can make it a custom fabric. You can do whatever you want. If you don't want it upholstered, you know, this is a really nice one done in raffia. And how about this one? This is amazing. And it's perfect for you guys that have studios where the door opens and you just fall right into your entire space. This little guy creates an entire entry hall out of your studio. So it's perfect for you guys. So, and if these tips are helping guys, 
Be sure and let me know which one is your favorite down below in the comments. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It's super, super helpful to the channel. Okay, so moving on. The next tip is a biggie. Getting your furniture scale right. This is a huge mistake I see a lot. I often walk into a space, you never put an eight foot sofa in a studio. What you need in a studio is a love seat. Now, there's a lot of really great options out there now to shrink your furnishings and have them have a lot of style. So you wanna make sure that they're smaller and you keep them light in scale. Think about things like a small round dining table. I love this white one with the sassy little brass chairs. That's a super little solution for something small. Or I love this little one that's almost like a bistro table with the black base. That's fantastic and it's two little lightweight Thone chairs. That looks great and it will fit perfectly into a studio and it gives you a multi-purpose surface. You know, you can't go wrong with this little brass one or of course the iconic tulip table, always good. We're gonna link to all of this down below. Think about seating being on lightweight legs like this chair, bring it up a little bit, give it a little space underneath. Opt for a love seat instead of a full scale sofa. There's some really good looking ones out here now. Look at this ivory one that's just chunky full of pillows and you can cozy up in it. Looks great. There's even the option of kind of this sort of cool hanging chair out of acrylic, which is great. It doesn't even have a base to it. It's sort of suspended in air. That's a wonderful solution. Now, here's a tip. Sometimes small spaces have sloping edges to ceilings. So what do you need to do there is you need to remember to keep your furniture low and that way you can tuck some seating pieces back into that area and it gives you full use of the space. Now another good option for seating is there are smaller scale corner sectionals because if you've got the room and it lays out the right way, getting seating into a corner is a great space saver. So it's a good thing to look for. Another thing to think about is ditch the traditional coffee table. You kind of don't have room. Instead, think about a couple of clustered smaller tables that can be moved around. Maybe even they double as a stool. Or for instance, take a look at this one, which has storage in the center and then a little walnut top. Or I love this little lucite one that just rolls around on legs. It's invisible, but it's a surface. So if you need to put a cocktail down, you're covered. And then of course, I love this little one. They're doing some really tiny little accent tables. I've used this one a lot because it's like 10 inches around. It's tiny, so it's a great little surface. And there's a lot of style now that's available to you that never was before. Okay, so next tip, also super important, is you wanna think about all your furniture as being multi-purpose. It all needs to be storage as best it can be. So there's lots of different variations on this here. Think about things like day beds instead of regular beds, trundle beds, also a good option, Murphy beds, a bed versus a sofa, and you know, there's all kinds of different options. You can even make storage above your beds. I love this one from Pottery Barn where they just wrap the whole headboard in storage, which is great. That's a great solution. They're also now making really great platform beds. So there's storage also underneath, which oh, really makes a big difference. Think about your TV. We've had lots of talks about TVs, but this time put the TV on the wall and instead of doing a credenza or a console below it, since you don't really necessarily have the space, do some custom narrow shelves. Maybe they're eight inches, maybe they're 10 or 12, and that gives you the ability to use the space around the television without having to have a big old piece of furniture on top of it, and you've just mounted it to the wall. Try and use every surface that you can think of. Think about wall desks. Those are great. They've come out with some really cute, lightweight, light scale ones. I love those. We talked about those coffee tables. Now they make them with storage. I love this one where the lid pops up. That's great. Or get little ottomans and you can just lift the top off, throw all the stuff in there that you don't need. How about using a bar cart 
We always love bar carts, but get a small scale one and use that as an end table. Put it on wheels, it rolls around, makes it super flexible. I even love this little tiny mirror that also has storage shelves both to the side and in back of it. So there's lots of different options here that are now being made. So make sure you're thinking about those kinds of solutions. So. My last tip today, and it's a super important one, is you have to really get strategic and think about your space like it's a boat. You need to make use of all of that vertical space that you've got. Now, you can do things like run shelves all the way up the wall, hack something from Ikea, that's always a great solution. Or how about considering running shelves even over doorways? That's a great idea. This area where you've got the space over the bed, that's fantastic. Although don't do that in California. Uh, or take shelves all the way to the ceiling. If you can, stuff them full of those good looking baskets so that you don't see all your crap and just make sure that every inch is used. Now the second use, if you don't have the clearance for storage, is mirrors. Ooh, small spaces and mirrors are meant to be together, let me tell you. So you wanna think about leaner mirrors. I love this one, that's a big boy. And you can get them a little bit narrower, they can have frames, they can be frameless. Frameless is even cooler. So there's lots of new good options with it. You just have to be thinking strategically on this one. Now, we're gonna recap. One, you wanna keep your envelope clean and as monochromatic as you can handle. Two, decide how to treat your floors to maximize the visual space. Three, consider how you can use a room divider if you need one and what's a good solution for you. Four, shrink your furnishings and make them double up as storage. And then five, make your vertical spaces count like custom shelves, mirrors, etc. Solutions! Okay, you guys with small spaces have a little bit of homework to do. And I will see all of you guys next week.